user interface, uh, kind of narrow, narrow the topic down particularly to cognitive load. At the same time, I want to do a little show and tell, show you the project that I'm working on. It's a tool to go along with giving presentations. And I put it on, oh, the, the notes for the talk are on the Cyber Wizard Institute workshop, by the way. And the project I'm working on is also on GitHub. And my username is Bloody Knuckles, and the, I call it Rotorio. And it's a tool to go along with giving presentations. And what I'm doing is feeding you lecture notes that are synchronized with the slides. Let me give you a real quick demonstration here. OK, I'm going to fire up my node. OK. Okay, so if you go to that URL, oops, not this part here. So 192.168.181.145, port 2000. So you got colon 2000. Okay. So when I so maybe you have some notes in your screen, I'm not sure, in that box. And let's say I'm on slide one here. You can hardly see it. Okay. Is anybody getting getting notes? Excellent. All right. I'm gonna go to slide two. So there you go, you should have more notes. And you can then add to those notes. I haven't, this is a prototype proof of concept, so just bare bones. Um, I'm not actually saving it, so if you actually want to save your notes, you're going to have to copy it and paste it somewhere. But just kind of a, a, a demonstration proof of concept here. Okay, so let me go back to that page. And, okay, so that was. On GitHub, Bloody Knuckles, Rittorio, and I welcome contributors. Okay, before I get started, I want to show you a few images. So here we go. So we got that. We got that. So we have our some machines with user interfaces, and and they're probably pretty simple, and you're probably pretty familiar with them. Here's one a little more complex, but I bet you it won't take you long to figure out how to use that, right? So as you're looking at those images, think about how your brain felt, and particularly where your eyes were going. And if you needed to use one of those, you know, would you hesitate to use it? Okay, here's a couple more images. So there's some. Kind of think about the same thing. How does your brain feel? Where do your eyes go? If you needed to use that, would you hesitate you know, as you approach it? Uh, how about this one here? Okay, you need some water. You walk up to this thing. Can you jump right in there? Start using it. How about that one there? Is that how you feel? So again, how does your how your brain feel when you're looking at those? And like your eyes as you're looking at at them. Yeah, let's go back. So kind of make note of where your eyes are going, how much they're moving, compared to those other earlier items, where those felt more comfortable, this feels... So same thing with web pages. Okay. And I'm going to start, I'm going to kill this server. Start 
this one. Okay. Okay, if you reload that page that you loaded earlier, you should get the notes for this presentation. So again, comparing page load versus cognitive load. You know, I look at a lot of uh, programming discussion groups, stuff like that, and often the subject comes up of how fast your page loads. And there's, there's a lot of solutions for it, you know, minimizing your graphics, compiling your, you know, bundling your scripts, um, even asynchronous resource loading. But what about, and it's clear, the penalty, you know, if your page takes too long to load, you know, we're all pretty sure that, you know, people aren't going to give you a whole lot of time to, to load that page before they're going to go to another option. <coughs> But I don't see a lot of talk about the cognitive load, you know, how long it takes for your user interface to load into your visitor's brain. So th that's another factor, you know, they need to make sense of it. And again, you know, there's a short window of patience where, you know, people are going to take the time to try to figure out your interface. Okay, so let's kind of back up a little bit, look at the big picture. Last week, Leslie talked about user experience, and user experience is the superset, it's kind of like the car or the, the use of the car, and user interface is a subset of that. So like we're talking about a car, the user interface is like the steering wheel, the pedals, the shifter, and there's a diagram here that uh, kind of one illustration to kind of give an idea of all the parts that go into user experience. And what we're talking about, that one on the bottom there, human-computer interaction. That, that's the user interface. So we, we've got a small part of the, the user experience, but I think a very important part. Kind of another big picture is like when you build websites, you might chart out your pages and the relationship to each other. And kind of what I'm talking about today is like when you're designing that one particular page. So focusing in on user interface on one particular page and particularly the clarity, you know, how long it takes to make sense of it. Okay, so the process of loading a particular page, you know, you load the page elements, you present the content, which might be, you know, some persuasive content or it might be tools if it's uh, some kind of online application. And then the last thing is some kind of call to action, one or more things that, that your user can then do. So we need to, you know, that, that's the whole process. And cognitive load fits in there, you know, as soon as the page is loaded, or even while it's loading, now people need to start making sense before they can then proceed to the, the rest of the flow there. And let's break down the page components. So we have the, it's kind of like, like you see on a television show or a movie, you know, they start out with the wide shots and then they kind of start moving in. Kind of same thing on your page and and that's also what's happening, I think, typically in the, your, the website visitor's brain. You know, there's kind of, they want to make sure they're in the right place. If they click something on Google or, or some other web page, they want to make sure they're in the right place. So that's kind of the site identification. And then you get a little closer in, and you got, okay, what is the subject of this page? You know, what's the page title? Again, making sure they're in the right place. And then they can get to the primary content, the main reason that, that they're there, and that's kind of like close up. And then a peripheral thing is where do, it, where do you go from here? So you always have, often you have navigation on your page. So those are kind of the primary page elements that, that we're dealing with. 
having to do with uh, user interface and cognitive load. <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at some principles for reducing cognitive load. And these are just some things that, um, you know, they're not necessarily scientific studies. Uh, I'm sure that there are studies that will support these things, but just in my development, um, these are things that have made sense to me over the years. So the first one is just to group things together. You know, group like things together, particularly with navigation. So if you have, if you can kind of categorize your navigation elements, that will help people. And even, you might even put headings. Like if you have a few categories of navigation, you might throw a heading on there to help people sort through it. Second one is consistency. So, like whether it's in the navigation or the headings, to have consistent uh, here we have like grammatical type, like for example, if you have navigation, you know, you have a contact us link, and then let's say you have a site map link, well those two are grammatically different. You have contact us, which is a verb, and then you have site map, which is a noun. So that's kind of one thing I like to do is, when I have a particular group, Use this if I'm if there are nouns, then make them all nouns. If they're verbs, make them all verbs. <clears throat> Same thing with the headings. Um, down on number four, we, we get to scannability and structured text. We'll kind of look at headings there, but like the your bold text on your page again. I think it would it helps people stay in a flow if you're using the same tense. And then the narrative. What I mean by that is, are you you're speaking in first person or second person? So like on a lot of sites, you'll see something like my preferences, you know, or your preferences. So kind of make a decision, you know, what perspective do you want the user to have as they're visiting your site, and then keep it consistent. Okay, the third one I got up there, priority, and I think that helps people sort through your interface and get to what they're looking for more quickly. And, and you, as you're building your page, just kind of think of, you know, what are the high priority items? What are the things you want to feature? And then, you know, the methods of showing priority are, you know, left to right. Left is, is a higher order than right, top to bottom. And then giving some kind of emphasis, you know, either bold, underline, or a, a a color that stands out, you know, that's that's different than the rest of the colors you have on your site. Okay, then four, scannability. Let me give you a couple examples of that. Okay. So I mentioned structured text. So basically that's, you know, just taking your text and breaking it up into parts and then giving it headings and then you can put other elements in there so that people can just glance over it you know, so they don't have to read the whole thing. I'm sure you've seen a lot of pages where you've got a, a wall of text, you know, and how hard that is to dig in and find what you're looking for. So break it up for your visitors and help them jump to, you know, whatever information, you know, they're looking for. Another thing for scannability is proximity. So kind of pull things that go together, together. And real simple example on forms, you know, we got labels and you have the forms that are, or the labels, you know, that are far from the elements. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to associate them, whereas if you have them next to the elements, well then it's, it's really clear. And that can go for, for other things, whether it's, you know, text elements that go together or images and text captions and pictures, that sort of thing. Along with scannability is spacing. You know, white space is, is very important. You know, when, just to give the eye room to separate the elements apart um, and to flow through your, your interface. And then the last one I got on there, and there's, there's many more, and this is definitely not an exhaustive list, but another, another one that 
that I think is helpful to use meaningful icons. So if you can come up with little icons or images that will give a clue as to you know the nature of the, the text or the link that goes along with it. And that's helpful for learning types. You know, different people learn and process things differently. Some people are very graphic, you know, so those icons help. Some people are very text-based, so they may be glossing over the icons and going to the text. And then also the icons will help with recollection. So as they're returning to your site, then you know, they'll have learned, you know, oh, this icon means that, and they won't even have to read it. They can just go there, visually identify it, click on it, and get to where they're going. Okay, so the benefits of reducing the cognitive load, I think the biggest benefit is the time saved for your visitors. The biggest project I work on has 11,000 accounts, over 11,000 accounts in it, so the way I look at it, you know, if I can save somebody one minute of time, you know, times that by 11,000, and that's approaching 200 hours. You know, so how many hours can I spend making the user interface easier to use and, and helping cut corners for people and how that will multiply? You know, so I could spend 100 hours saving people that use that program one minute and it would, you know, we'd be saving $100. Then, of course, you have people are going to stay on your website longer, on your web page longer, and they're going to more easily retain the information, you know, that they've gotten from your site. And then, of course, you're more likely to have an increased response rate, those call to actions that we mentioned earlier. Um, you're more likely to happen. Okay, let me go here. Okay. So to wrap it up, this is your brain. Okay. I'm sorry, this this is your visitor this is people who are visiting your website's brain. This is your visitor's brain. And this is your visitor's brain on your website, if you didn't take time to refine the user interface, then this is their brain if you did take time to refine their user interface. Thank you. Let's back up a little bit. Okay. Give me, if you don't mind, give me a little feedback on the project that I'm working on, Rotorio. Anybody have any problems with it? Did it kill, die on you? Or? I should have told you to, let's see, why don't you try, re oh, let's see, here I'm going to kill it, and start it, okay, try refreshing that page. My IP changed. Oh wait, it says localhost. That's fine. So there's hard coded localhost in there. So oh, it for you, but no, not. Oh. Okay, I, I didn't change it on that one. Here, I can do that. Um. Right here? Yeah. Lo 
location. Dot host name. Dot host name. Yeah, host has the port in it, and host name is dot view dot port. So that should work. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I don't get that error. Okay, now are you getting yep. page one and two? Yep. Anybody not getting more pages? Okay, I got that right. We're in two dot one six eight dot one eight one dot one four five for two thousand. Here it is. Yeah, 192.168.181.145 for 2000. 